Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which serves as something of an adjunct to the videos I've been making looking at the British Army's PLC or personal load carrying equipment. Obviously I've been making a series of videos looking at the first issue version of the components used with that set of equipment. We're going to be having a look in this video at the SA-8 or L85 bayonet in a little bit more detail. It was covered briefly in one of the parts of that series looking at PLCE and I thought it was worth having a quick look at this in a little bit more detail. We're also going to have a look at some of the other accessories including a couple of examples of the frogs used with this, one of which we've already looked at in the series looking at PLCE, the other of which is the later example or a later example made in DPM which has the different fixtures and fittings and that'll sort of act as an introduction to what we're going to be talking about in future videos looking at the later issues of PLCE. So without further ado we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at the bayonet and these various other items of kit. So here we have the bayonet, two scabbards, two frogs at the back there and this fitting which we're going to talk about a little bit more in just a minute. I'd like to talk about the frogs first. The first one we have here we've looked at relatively recently the video is looking at British PLCE. This is a first issue PLC or personal load carrying equipment frog for the L85 bayonet and you can tell it's the first issue because on the back here we have the two belt loops with corresponding C hooks and the C hooks of course stop this sliding around on the belt. The weight of this is carried by the belt loops but the single C hook at each position here would stop it sliding around and obviously you can carry it high on the belt or low on the belt depending on preference using the two sets of belt loops on the back there. We've looked at these very recently so I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail here. Made in green nylon as you can see, not infrared reflective. There would be a follow-up design still made in green which was infrared reflective which had the modernized, the, the modified fittings which are on the back of this which we'll see in just a minute but still made in green and then the DPM example would come along after that. The way this works, it's not a frog in the traditional sense, it's more of an outer sheath for the scabbard which slots in like that and then secures in place with the buckle at the top there as you can see. So quite simple to remove or fix the scabbard in place in the frog. The DPM example we have here is dated 2007 so it really sits outside the date range I collect but it's of a pattern made in the early 1990s so it fits in that regard. It's one that came with a job lot of other bits and pieces and I thought it was worth having a look at in this video. You have two press studs on each of these belt loops here so the belt loops are no longer fixed and it's no longer held in place on the belt using C-hooks. You now have these tabs made of plastic and these fit into the slots on the back of the belt to keep this in place. A better system overall and it means of course you can remove the components of the equipment from the belt without taking everything off. If you have fixed belt loops you have to slide everything in front of the component you want to remove off the belt as well. In this case you can just unfasten the belt loop and take the item off that you want to remove. So a bit more flexible from that point of view and this is sort of a this sort of preempts the further videos I'm going to make in the future looking at the later issues of the PLC. So works in exactly the same way otherwise you have a, a slot in there into which the scabbard fits and then it's secured in place with the buckle here. One other thing to mention with these as already mentioned is that they are infrared reflective and you can see that's denoted on the label at the back there as you can see. So that's an, two examples of the frogs for this. They function in the same way but the fixture and fittings on the back for attaching to the belt are modified. So we'll move on to have a look at the bayonet and the two scabbards we have here now. The first one we'll look at here is the simpler version. This is basically just a plastic scabbard. It does have all the mounting points for the various features we're going to look at in a minute but they aren't fitted. This is the other services scabbard not the infantry scabbard so a lot simpler. You don't have all of the other bits and pieces which we have on this one here. So first of all I remove the bayonet which we'll have a look at in just a moment. You have a sharpening stone along the back here which fits into or would fit into that slot there. You can see how these it's nice having the other services uh, scabbard. You can see how the components are fitted onto the plastic scabbard itself. And then we have a metal section at the bottom here which forms a wire cutter, as you can see there, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. And a saw blade here, which folds out and fits into this notch here. And then that can be used holding onto the scabbard itself as a handle. The wire cutter operates with the bayonet itself. And this is a feature which had been around for quite a long time on uh, Eastern Bloc bayonets and scabbards. Let's see if I can see this. It's a little bit of a tight fit this. I actually had to do a little bit of work to get this to fit. Let's see if it will. There we go. So slotting the bayonet, the notch on the bayonet onto that T, little T piece here. There we go. You can then use the back of the blade of the bayonet as a wire cutter. Bring this into camera here. 
slot a piece of wire in here and you'd be able to cut it. That's the idea. I'm not sure how effective these were. Again, I'd be interested to know in the comments if anyone's used one of these as a wire cutter, how effective it was. This is basically a design taken almost directly from Eastern Bloc, or AK bayonets and scabbards. They had a very similar fitting on the, the base of the scabbard onto which you could fit the blade of the bayonet itself to act as a wire cutter and it had been around for a very long time. So a bit of departure for, for British practice. This is something new with the SA-80 bayonet. The bayonet itself, as you can see here, you've got a fairly short blade, unsurprisingly. You've got the reverse section of the blade at the top here for use with the wire cutter. And overall, uh, this particular example, the, the, the manufacturing quality isn't great, I would say, on the blade. Uh, but the example of that being the fact this had to be slightly opened out to actually function as a wire cutter. It wouldn't fit on as it came to me, so I had to open this up just a little bit to get it to fit on, and, and even now it's quite a tight fit. But you can see the details of the design of the blade there. And then the way it fits onto the rifle is actually directly over the muzzle device. So the slots here correspond with the slots on the muzzle device of the SA-80, the, the L85. And that's a little bit of a problem because, of course, it actually fires through the grip, and the grip will get hot. Uh, as you, if, you, if you fire for a prolonged period with the bayonet fixed. Obviously bayonets are not hu used to a great degree uh, in, the modern, in modern warfare, uh, but they are still part of the design. Uh, I believe bayonet tra training is still conducted uh, in the British Army. I'd be interested to know from anyone currently serving uh, whether or not it is, uh, but certainly it was still practiced up until relatively recently, if not right up to the modern day. And the way this locks on, you can see there's a little locking lug here. That just depresses. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there. Can you? See, hopefully, you can see the little logging, locking lug depressing inside there when I press down on this button at the back. And obviously, that's spring loaded. As you can see there, there's a little spring in the base there underneath this little button. So, a bit of an afterthought, I would say, in terms of design. Uh, it does work, it does attach to the rifle, and obviously, they were used in anger uh, quite famously, but. A uh, bit of an afterthought, I think, when it comes to the design of the rifle, which is not really surprising in, in a modern context. Uh, it's, it's happened in more than one instance that a, a modern rifle has been designed and then some, suddenly someone said, well, how are we going to fit a, a bayonet onto this? I think the AK-47 itself was an example of that at a much earlier time period. So that's the L85 bayonet, the two scabbards and the two frogs. We also have this fitting here, which is simply a piece of moulded plastic and as you can see here, it has clips on the back to fit onto a belt, a relatively narrow belt. And the buckle matches up to the female section of the buckle on the scabbard itself. Now, this is something which came with one of these scabbards. It may have come with the other services scabbard that I have here, I think. And it's obviously intended to just hang this directly from a belt without needing to use a frog. I don't know if this was intended as the method of carrying the bayonet on the 1958 pattern equipment before PLC was introduced. I honestly don't know much about this component at all. I've not really been able to find out anything about it. So if anyone could advise if they saw these in service, if they were actually used or not, I'd be interested to know. All I know at present is that they exist and this seems to be their presumed use. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As said, this does serve as something of a teaser for the future videos looking at the later issues of PLCE. Hopefully it's also just been interesting having a look at the bayonet in a little bit more detail as well. If you have found this interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated as they always say. Point to note, over on Patreon, I'm now uploading the videos directly over there so they can be watched ad-free by patrons. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch with me but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address in the description as well. That's everything for this video. So, until next time, bye for now.